Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Guides video. My name is Humphrey Chung and if you're studying for CCIE service provider you know that a gun is basically pointed at your head right now because you're trying to reach or trying to beat the May 2015 deadline. That's the last month that you can take the current version of service provider until they introduce, change it into version 4 and introduce the ugly diagnostic and troubleshooting sections just like in routing and switching. So how do you troubleshoot or how do you troubleshoot? Why did I say that? How do you make a virtual CCIE service provider lab inside of GNS3? It's actually very easy. So if you've bought workbooks from INE or Narbic, you know that their topologies generally have six to eight normal routers and two XRVs. What we're looking at here inside of INE's IPv4 diagram is six routers, two XRVs. I'm going to show you how to do this inside of GNS3 so that you can practice about 90-95% of your labs. You're still need, going to need to do some rack rentals to play around with the ME3400 switch and some of the features that just won't work inside of GNS3 like BFD, but it's not going to be a big deal. All right, six routers. What router image should you use? You should use the C7200 Advanced Enterprise K9 12.2-33 SRE11 image. Very easy to find. Google for it. Uh, if you have a Cisco account, you should be able to download it without too much of a problem. And when you have GNS3 open, hopefully you're using 12.2, you're going to go to Edit Preferences. Go down here to iOS Routers, and you're going to click New. You're going to add in the image, browse for the image, and let's see here, C7200, blah, 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 click OK. It's going to find it, click Next, name 7200, and you probably want to call it something like SP Service Provider or something like that. Platform 7200, that's fine. Click Next. Default RAM, give it 512 megs. Click Next. Very, very, very important for slot zero. Nothing. Nothing in slot 0. For slot 1, you're going to make it as P-A-F-E-T-X. That's the fast Ethernet links right there. Click on Next, Idle PC, finish that. Don't worry about it just yet. And you are done with your service provider 7200 model of router. Click OK. Always make sure you test out your router first. Test out one model before you drag in six of them because if one doesn't work, six of them sure as hell are not going to work. Click on play and then console in and just make sure that everything boots up. Now in your first boot up, you haven't set the idle PC so you probably notice that things are a bit slow and also your task manager is going to be, man, 13%, 14%. It's pretty ugly. So what we want to do is we want to right click the router, click on idle PC. It's going to find the idle PC and then it's going to throttle down your CPU to a more manageable level. You only need to do this once and always do this with a single router. Don't have six routers all piled up. You're going to find the one with a star by it. There we go. Click apply and OK. And let's take a look at our task manager. Look at that. It went down quite a bit. Now it's at a 1%. So that's very, very manageable. Let's go back down to our console window. Looks pretty good. Show IP interface. Show IP interface brief. And that uh, looks pretty good. So fast Ethernet uh, 1 0. We have some others. Uh, don't know why those popped in there. Must be some type of weird bug because I only picked one in slot 1. So, okay. Well, if this happens, if you see multiple ones, what you want to do is click the drop down and zero that first slot out. So, but not a big deal. We'll click close there and we will stop that guy. And so what you want to do now is you want to drag in a whole bunch more. You want to drag in five more of these guys. Five more. And you're going to drag in the XRV that hopefully you have set up according to the video that I published uh, just yesterday. So drag in two XRVs, and you're also going to drag in the Ethernet switch. Just a normal Ethernet switch. You're not going to need to do any VLANs on the switch because all the VLANs and stuff are done on the routers. And I'll get to that in just a second. 
Now linking everything up, you're going to click on R1. Notice that uh, if you left all the links in there, you'll see that uh, all your fast Ethernets are in there. So what we need to do is we need to right click on each router, configure R1, and just make sure in slots that uh, slot 0 has nothing and slot 1 has the FETX. And now that I've changed it, now when I go to add links and click on the router, you can see that only fast 1.0 is there. So that's kind of a, a telltale sign that you have too many slots occupied inside the router. So router 2, go to slots, zero out slot 0, and leave slot 1 as P-A-F-E-T-X. Okay, click add a link, fast 1.0 to the switch. All right, and of course you're going to do that for all the routers. And for the XRVs, you're going to start to Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 1 on the other guy, right? So we'll just pretend that I added everything in there. Okay, so now you're wondering, well, how do I get from this diagram to INE's diagram? It's kind of, it's kind of strange here, right? Here it's all uh, nice and neat. I've got a link from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, but... Inside of JNS3, everything's centrally connected to the switch. What's up with that? Well, there's going to be some magic here with sub-interfaces and VLAN tagging. And logically, we're going to make it look like router 3 is connected to router 2. So 2 to 3, 2 and 4, 1 and 2, and so on. Now, you're going to need to modify uh, labels here. So on the diagram, it's fast 0, 0, but when you actually start configuring on the router, it's fast 01.23.36 or whatever. Now up here between 1 and 2, notice that they have a, on their diagram, it's fast 00 to fast 10 of R2. You're going to sub-interface that, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right. Let's start up router 1, and we'll start up router 2. We're going to console to router 1 and router 2. Okay, first we're going to show IP interface brief. Let's just take a look at what interfaces we have. Okay, we, we still have kind of like the, the new one, but what we're going to be dealing with is FAST10. So to get this to work, logically for router1 to see router2, you're going to go to interface FAST10. You're going to do a sub-interface dot 12. Reason dot 12 is you're between 1 and 2. You're going to have to put some VLAN tagging there, dot 1Q tagging, and you're going to put it as VLAN 12, and we'll give it an IP address of 1111, just for kicks. Now, of course, it's different than the diagram, but we're just doing this to show you that you can get logical connectivity between your routers this way. And then go back into interface fast 10 and no shut. Go over to router 2, conf t, interface fast 10, sub interface here. Make it easy, dot 12, in cap, dot 1q, 12, has to be the same as the other side. IP address 1112, 255.255.255.0. Go into fast 10 again, no shut. And let's see if we can ping the other side. So we'll ping 1112. Should get a good ping, and there we go. And if we repeat, just to, for the sake of seeing if it's stable, we get a stable ping. Now, if you had accidentally put your fast ether interface into slot zero, you would be seeing these pings die out. Uh, kind of you know, one out of four, one out of five pings would die out. And that's just a bug that I believe they will fix in a future version of GNS3. All right. So that should be a pretty easy intro in how to set up your GNS3 lab for a CCIE service provider. One thing you can't do, you can't definitely can't do BFD. BFD will blow up your router. It's just going to hang or reload. Not recommended. Uh, and of course, the 3400 switching can't do that as well. But as far as most tasks inside your workbook, you should be OK, especially most of the OSPS stuff. Um, Almost all of the OSPF stuff, almost all of the ISI stuff should be okay. BGP, MPLS shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, once again, my name is Humphrey Chung with Router Gods. 
Thanks for watching.